Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Tears of Sorrow, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine... You ever hear a little Malayan with black earrings and white smiling teeth bust out laughing like he just won a lottery and say, Look at me, boss. I'm so happy. Yes, yes, I got tears of sorrow. Yeah, I know. You think I'm crazy. So do I. So does the Western Milk and Separator Company. That's the outfit I work for. I travel in farm supplies. My district is Eastern California, Arizona, New Mexico. But, Valentine, there's one place on my route I can't stay away from. It's the dullest, saddest, poorest, loneliest place on all of Route 113. (laughs) Gas, hamburgers, motel, and the Malayan. The place is called Stillman's Last Chance. Brother, it is. Now, listen. Last time I was there, I bumped into the wrong cabin by mistake. I never see what happens, except I get a knife in my face, a foot in my stomach, and a fist on my jaw. The next thing I know, I'm waking up between my own proper sheets, and nobody will say who put me to bed. Nobody will explain a note I find in my pocket which says stop asking questions or you'll have a worse accident. Valentine, I'm going back to that place. But I'm no hero. I need your help. If you could come meet me there and drive out on Highway 113. Stillman's last chance, huh? <laughs> last chance at what? <laughs> last chance at Stillman going broke. That's all. <laughs> oh, I get it. Say, I noticed your license plates. California, huh? I got friends in Hollywood. Is that so? Sure. I thought of going out there sometimes. There's one fella, he says I'm a type they don't get very often. He was just passing through and he seen me. <laughs> I don't know, though. Well, you're very attractive. Of course, this dress is a little tight. It's pretty hard keeping your skin like this with all the dust. But I think a girl owes it to herself, no matter where she is. Uh, and... Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I, uh... Guess your husband ain't much interested in these abstractions, is he? Huh? He's not my husband. Oh? Well, if you'd like some coffee, mister. <laughs> hey, look, lady. Uh, if you'd like to go back and wash your hands or anything, hey, I'll show... Hey, Lucy! Sh- Lucy! <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, Mac? Here I am. I told you there was customers. Get in here, finish the dishes. I'll take care of them. <laughs> your name's Lucy, George. Shall I tell her you're a casting director? Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's look around and find this crazy salesman. Well, Mr. Guthrie, I've seen what the attraction is here. Lucy. Yeah. No wonder you couldn't stay away from this place. Now, now, just because I'm a traveling salesman. (laughs) Here, wait, I get a little music on there so they can't hear us. That, uh, Lucy there, she's his wife. His what? You mean that older man is... Sure, yeah, the sourpuss. That's Max Stillman. He owns the place. Makes no bones about it, either. And don't forget he owns the girl with the wandering eyes, too. It's like the movies, isn't it? Middle-aged man with a frizzle-top young wife way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you wouldn't be wanting to rescue her, would you? She could be talked into running away, I imagine. No, no. Whatever made you start getting me wrong? Now, look, we drove a long way, Buster, just on the basis of some double talk and your letter, so let's start getting you right. Double talk, nothing. It's even worse than when I wrote you. It will sneak out the side here while the music makes them think we're still in the bar. Okay. But Stillman, he watches me like a hawk this time. 
Where are we going? Here. Outside, up, up the path there. See, I figured out which cabin it was, that one I stumbled into before. And Stillman, I think it was him wrote me the note telling me to stop being nosy. All right, Mr. Detective. Valentine, I got beat up. I could prefer charges, but we're going to figure it out instead. Here, turn right. Now, this place is broke, see? Not a penny. And those two in there, they hate each other. The only other person, the only one who's happy, it's the cook. I swear they never paid him a penny. Wait a minute. The cook? Yeah, Charlie George Washington. <laughs> what? Hey, he's been here six or eight months, Malayan. Little guy takes an awful beating from Stillman. He always comes back with a grin, just like he owned the secret of the world. The tears of sorrow, huh? So all that stuff wasn't just a gag. Of course not. The Malayan. And you also mentioned a knife in your face. Yeah, Valentine, it was Charlie's cabin that I stumbled into. Here, yeah, this is it. The curtains are all drawn. Yeah. Always are. Long time ago, Stillman told me Charlie would never let anybody near his room. I should have added two and two faster. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Isn't Charlie here now? <laughs> it's his day off. Some big chicken ranches down the valley. He always goes over to visit with his oriental friends. Curtains all drawn. Doors locked tighter than the drum. This morning, I found that if you squeeze in the space between this and the empty cabin next door... Come on. Yeah, okay. We're still with you. Watch those nails there, Angel. No, I, I'm all right, George. I just had some idea of why we're squeezing... This book says a window in here with curtains that are frayed. You can see through them. What? Yeah. Hey, you see? Inside Charlie's room there. A coffin. A casket. Yeah. Look at the way it shines. And the fancy carving on it. George, it must be solid silver. A silver casket. Where would a little cook like that ever get enough money to yeah, buy it? It would take there? plenty to buy it. But there's something else. Doesn't it make you kind of wonder what's inside the casket? The Malayan. What? Yeah, not even a mark on him. Oh, yes, there is a little bruise on his jaw. But there he is, Brooksy, dead. In his own silver casket. Well, Mr. Valentine, Charlie George Washington was not a young man. Look, Doctor, look. You've seen the coffin. I've told you how the people acted. And there's that bruise. So somebody hit him or maybe he bumped into a door. I treated this man once, Valentine, and the coffin fits in, surely. He must have bought it for himself. <laughs> a philosopher, I guess. You see, his chest was weak, his heart was worse. He acted like the lord of the world, and at the same time, knew darn well he was dying. Uh-huh, quite a guy, all right. But, Doctor, you can't kid me uh, that last now, night... Now, get me straight, Valentine. I think he was murdered, too. But my testimony won't help you much. I can't prove the shock of a tap on the jaw did it any more than you can prove that he had a... Buried treasure of some kind. No, no, he didn't, I tell you. I know. How do you know, Mr. Stillman? Because I looked for it. In his shack, in his clothes. Even followed him to see if he ever buried anything. Of course, that's why I try to chase people away from him. Because I wanted to find it myself. Only I didn't. So, but I didn't do anything wrong, did I? All right, all right. Lucy, let me ask you... She don't know you... no more about it than I do, mister. You see, it's too bad now. Charlie's dead, that's all. It was an accident. Sure. Maybe all the dough he ever had was invested in that fancy box. That you he... know, I might agree with you if Charlie was still alive. If there hadn't still been reason for somebody to slug him last night. Gosh, I didn't even see him last night. Neither did I. Oh, no, no, of course not. Who else was staying here besides Guthrie? Nobody. Mac, if you're going to... Nobody, I said. Well, now, look, don't argue about it. You're, uh, you're jealous of your wife, Mac, aren't you? She's nice looking. It, uh, it wouldn't have been somebody that, uh... What? Right under his nose? Ha, 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 Shut up. <gasps> yeah. Now, look, mister, we've been helpful enough now. There's an empty cabin next to Charlie's. Guthrie says he saw you bringing fresh linen to it this morning. Uh -huh. And it's happened before, yeah. 
He says he counted four dirty plates once when there were only three people. Well, look, maybe I slept in that other cabin. See, and who cares? I don't get excited, Buster. Well, uh. a oh, couple of customers. If you'll pardon us, Mr. <laughs> oh, yeah, Rolfe. he'll excuse you. Hey, Mac. Hey, the law. Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac, where are you? Yeah. Oh, uh, I saw the doctor's car out front. Is he here? Yeah, cabin 14, officer. What's happened? <sighs> Accident up the highway. Almost got me. Pepper, too, here. Hello, Pepper. Hey, uh, got some people hurt out in the car. You need me anymore, well, Look, you want some help? You no, need me no, anymore? no, no, no. I'll, I'll drive them up to the cabin for the doc. Hey, uh, put some coffee in that guy, will you? He almost got his truck turned over. What? Pepper. Pepper. Yeah, come on, tell us, Pepper. Oh, holy smoke, I can't stand the sight of them things. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Stillman. Got a piece of your fresh pie. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Coffee's too hot. Maybe it's whiskey I want. Hey, friend, calm down. Well, it's my egg truck, see? I run the pickup route out of here for the poultry outfits. It was an hour ago, maybe two. We've been working to get them people out. Tourists, car coming from the east. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was it? Who got hit? Well, I seen this car behind me coming like a bat at a... Oh, hey, excuse me, Mrs. Stillman. Yeah, what? Well, it was up in the curves. You know these mountains. Anyway, this crazy galoot is in such a hurry, he barrels right past me on a curve, and this other car's coming from the east right head on. The cop, he's right behind the eastern car. I slam into a ditch, and he skids sideways across the road. Oh, brother. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, all right. Uh, this, uh, this guy going so fast, he was coming from this direction. Huh? And, Mac, before the cop gets back, uh, there's something I gotta tell you. Huh? Well, well what do you mean? Well, gosh, I, I, I'm sorry, but this guy who's speeding who passes me, the cop says he's somebody broke a parole. What are you talking now, about? Now, take it easy, take it easy. The cop says it's Bo Stillman, that cousin of yours. What? Yeah. Yeah, Mac, the cop seems to think Bo must have come from here. I just wanted to warn you. The cop says he'll bet you were hiding Bo out again. Yeah, well, where is Bo? What happened to him? He... He... he, he he's dead, Mac. Bo? Other people only got injured. Bo's dead. Oh. So, there was somebody here in the empty cabin last night. Your cousin. And now he dies by a real accident while speeding away. All right. All right, all right, all right, mister. Sure. Only look, I, I want to explain... Never mind, Mac, not now. Besides, you better look after your wife. She just fainted. We'll return to tonight's adventure, George Valentine, in just a moment. How come neighbor Brown, who has a car several years older than yours, drives past you with a big, broad smile on his face? Well, looks like he's got that new car feeling. And how did he get it? Not by using a gasoline that contains engine-sticking gum, that's for sure. So it's a safe bet that neighbor Brown is using Chevron Supreme, the gasoline that's super refined to get rid of engine-sticking gum. This troublemaker, gum comes from the impurities that are naturally present in most raw gasolines. And Chevron Supreme is the gasoline in the West that's super refined to eliminate gum. Just try it on your own car. You'll get and keep that new car feeling. Try it tomorrow for fast-starting, smooth pickup, ping-free power on hills, and for full mileage in the kind of driving you do. Ask for super-refined Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. I so happy, I got tears of sorrow. Those were the words of Charlie George Washington, the enigmatic little Malayan cook who was the only happy person at Stillman's last chance. The only happy person, yet in his room he had an ornate silver casket waiting. But now that Charlie is dead, you can't believe somehow that he wasn't murdered. But by whom? Max Stillman? His wife, Lucy, with the wandering eyes. Jeff Guthrie, the salesman who hired you. You settle on the prime suspect, a cousin of Max Stillman's hiding out from the law. The only trouble is that cousin is now dead, too. This time from a real accident out on the highway. 
And so you talked to the highway patrolman who was there. Oh, Mr. Valentine, I, I told her how it happened. Oh, and uh, Pepper here saw it better than I did. Just streaking up the road he was, come past me just what like I he was... What I want to know is why he was in such a hurry. Mm, well, the law wasn't closing in on him or anything, if that's what you mean. Yeah, he didn't even know what part of the state he was in. Yeah. Somebody said he broke parole. That's right, in Tucson. Yeah, he was one of those guys that's always in trouble. Max Stillman in there claims he was surprised to see Bo show up here. He just pulled in late last night and asked for a bed, then drove off first thing this morning. Uh-huh. Harboring a criminal. Well, yeah, sure, to be technical. Oh, but Max, all right. He never done anything himself, I know of. Uh-huh. Uh, Pepper, you know these people pretty well, the Stillmans. Well, I've been making egg pickups for the big ranches over here for a couple of years. Out of Williams and Flagstaff only. Well, I know... All I mean is maybe you know some gossip about them. Hmm? Well, what are you driving at? Well, uh, how about Lucy Stillman and Max's cousin, Bo? That make any sense? Remember, she fainted when she heard about this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was Bo Stillman, 60 years old, with a face he never shaves, and a mouthful of tobacco. Oh, okay, <laughs> we'll throw that one out. Mrs. Stillman will. <laughs> she smiles at just about everybody, mister. That's right. Well, now, that's what intrigues me. That'll be the best cover-up for the fact that there really is some man beside her husband. Well, gossips haven't got it pegged yet, and... Well, I tell you this, I don't hang around enough to find out. My wife sees to that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in the same boat. Wait a minute, Pepper. Where are you going? Well, gosh, I got a load of eggs standing out in the sun there, you know. Oh, uh, I'll run Pepper back up to where we left his truck and then get back to my job on the highway. Doc's getting an ambulance for those other people from the accident. They're taken care of, so... So you think the law isn't needed anymore and I'm just stalling you, huh? Well, I am, officer, and I'll tell you the reason. George. Yeah, Brooksy. George. Yeah, right here, Brooksy. Oh. Did you get them? Well, just the secretary on duty, but she'll locate her boss and have him call us back. Hey, wait a minute. What, what's all this? A funeral parlor in Phoenix, officer. The outfit whose nameplate is on that silver coffin of Charlie's. Yeah? Oh, well, what did they say? Oh, uh, you mean you are interested? George, it was only sent to him on consignment. At least that's what the girl's records showed, but she said her boss was... Consignment, huh? So Charlie hadn't paid for the thing yet. Or if he had, it was only a deposit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a crime, isn't there? Because how could Charlie have expected to pay for that thing, or the funeral parlor expected to be paid, unless he did have some money hidden away? And where is it now? Well, where was it at any time? Oh, I've heard those stories. People wondering why he was so happy, betting he had some hidden away. Mac looked all over for the treasure and never found it. Sure, and we've done a little looking ourselves. Only in the wrong places, Brooksy. We've never been obvious enough. Hey, give me that letter the salesman wrote us to bring us here. I'm beginning to wake up, Angel. Wait a minute. Yeah, here we are. Dear Mr. Valentine, you ever hear a little Malayan, you know the type, wears black earrings and white smiling teeth and so forth and so forth? You mean black earrings? But he always wore them, Valentine, just black buttons and Oh, no, he didn't. Not when we found the body. George, you're right. There were just the marks on his ears. Yeah, but... where his earrings used to be. Well, I'll, I'll grant you, I never saw Charlie without him before. It'd be a I... pretty good joke on people if his treasure were right in front of them. And listen to this. I'm so happy I got tears of sorrow. I got the tears of sorrow. Pearls, maybe. Tear-shaped pearls. Hmm? Brooksy, do you have any idea what a fortune a pair of matched black pearls would be worth? No, I haven't. Holy seen. smoke. I, uh... I have... I guess you're not leaving now, eh, officer? Huh? Oh, oh uh, hey, Pepper. Yeah? I'll flag a car to take you back to your truck. Okay. Valentine, we're going to comb this place from kitchen to towel okay, racks. Okay, friend, we'll look for earrings, all right. But it's the person who knocked Charlie down and took him off him that I want. It's Charlie's murderer that we're going to find. The old-fashioned swoon. No, it happens to anybody. And with all the excitement going on here, Honey, I... you don't know how mixed up and upset you can get when you're married to a police dog like that. <laughs> I guess that isn't any worry of yours. Um, did you see Bo Stillman when he was here last night? Gosh, no. I mean, it was a complete surprise when I found he was here. But I didn't talk to him or anything. Sit down, won't you? Oh, thank you. This is a nice room. 
You didn't see uh, Charlie last evening either, did you? Not after dinner dishes. Then I did some bacon. Mac, he was asleep already. I went out for a little walk. Mm -hmm. Gee, poor little Charlie. Mac was rough with him sometimes, but I never was. I was... Hey, why'd you come in here? What do you want? Well, I told you. Just to see how you were feeling. No, you didn't. You thought I was up front in the lunchroom. All right, have it your own way. Well, what do you want? What do you come snooping here for? Lucy, what's in the little bag behind the door there? Hey, you get out of there. You get out of there. Put that down. Oh, that's that. Well, I... We nice girls, though. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. Honey, please don't open that. That There's nothing important in there. I'm it's sorry, I... too, Lucy. I... You're right. It isn't what I was looking for. I just thought what gaudy decorations a pair of pearls would make for... For a gaudy girl, is that what you were going to say? No, I... Well, anyway, they're not here. Only a change of underwear, slip, roll of 30, 40... Fifty dollars. Extra stockings. When were you planning on running away? It's none of your business. It's none of oh, your business. Well, I was saved by the bell, George. Yeah. She, why, Mr. Valentine, we was just yeah, having yeah, a yeah. talk no, when Come she on, said... Brooksy, never mind. What? Mrs. Stillman, a deputy sheriff's going to stay here until we get back. To make his job easy, we'll take Guthrie with us. George. We're going for a ride with the highway patrol, Angel. Lucy, that husband of yours got away. He must have taken out of here faster than his cousin ever drove. Here's where the wreck was, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see any Dodge parked around. That's what Mac drives. Yes, George. If Mac stopped here, he's already gone. How on... about it? You see any tracks, officer? Uh, I... I can't tell a thing. The wrecker in the ambulance that picked up Bull must have backed all over the shoulders here. Well, that's you? what Mac must be following. The wreck itself and the ambulance. The body of Bull. Yeah. If the pearls were in the wreck, I, I don't see how they could have got thrown clear. Must still be in the wrecked car someplace. Or in Bo's pocket. Halfway on to Mountain View by now. Valentine, maybe I'm just a thick-headed You know, I think it's a very simple crime that's piled up like a snowball. Simple? With silver caskets and malaise. Still, it all boils down to this. Charlie had something worth money. And one or more people figured that out. Well, I grant you that... Bo Stillman spent the night in the cabin next door to Charlie's. Oh, I get it. The window. He could have looked in, spotted the coffin, got curious, and gone over Obviously, there. that's what Mac thinks happened. Come on, let's get after him. I must be getting on him, sir. There's Pepper's egg truck up ahead. Well, come on, officer. Step on All it. All right. Can't you get by the truck now? I can't see how. I'll, I'll give Pepper a touch of the siren so he'll let us pass him. You know, I've been thinking about Lucy. The way she's been acting all day. Nervous Nellie. Oh, I doubt if she tapped Charlie on the jaw herself. But suppose her accomplice did. Her boyfriend. Valentine, I told you once before, I never said. Can't so you much get past that guy, officer? His shoulder's too soft for Pepper to pull over and let us by. Listen, Guthrie, listen. Suppose Lucy's nervous because everything's gone wrong. A tap on the jaw didn't just knock Charlie out, it killed him. And then there was Bo Stillman, the cabin next door. And suppose he didn't do it himself, but suppose he saw it done. Look, I'm still telling you, I didn't A little didn't crime have... with everything going wrong and snowballing. And the ones who did it scared to death, running. Oh, these blasted curves and these slow trucks. There, there. Pepper's waving you to come on. He can see. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice guy. Uh, hey, give me that. Hey, let go of that wheel. George, George. Hang on, hit the brakes. Uh, it wasn't Charlie who was murdered, it was Bo Stillman. What? Pepper's a nice guy, huh? He can see if there's any cars. Huh? No cars coming, huh? Well, it's not the kind of a murder you could plan. But for a guy running, a guy scared to death, yeah, it could have messed us up pretty bad. Almost as badly as Bo Stillman. Oh, George. Now, let me do the driving, officer. You want to be free to use a gun on that guy, Pepper. Yeah, yeah, I'll get out, Mr. Valentine. Gee, I... Back there, I, I didn't see that other car oh, coming. Oh, no, not much. Honest, I, I, I was just... Man, on your legs, stop wobbling. Oh, look, I, I haven't done nothing. No, you just tapped a guy on the jaw to get some pearls for a girl. Huh? 
I should have guessed you were Lucy's boyfriend, Pepper. You've been on this run for a couple of years, you said. Pick up fresh eggs, so you have to come out at night. Lucy said she went for a little walk last night. Did some baking, too, she said. I remember you seemed to know she had fresh pies. Look, Mr. Valentine, I'd never kill anybody as long as I live. unless you got scared. No, no. I know how that bowl of jelly in your head works. Last night you got the pearls. Only Bo Stillman saw you, and you knew it. So instead of you and Lucy running away right then, you wait until morning. Knowing Bo will try to get you alone for a little shakedown. Uh, look, there. Valentine, listen, you got... Bo knows where to find you. Follows you down the highway. You know he'll try to pass you huh? so he can flag you down. Yeah. Well, now, maybe you didn't plan it that way, but you got the nastiest idea I ever heard of. You waved him to pass on when you could see another car was coming. Look, Valentine, you gotta believe me, you gotta... What else could I do? When I hit Charlie, he died. When his day off was over, what people would have gone in and found he'd been murdered. You're wrong, Pepper. They wouldn't have. What? It never could have been proved. What's that? The doctor told me that. But, Buster, you overheard the cop and me figuring out the pearls and talking about a murderer. No. And then when you heard the siren and saw no. the red light and us right behind you... No. The temptation was too no. much, wasn't it? No, no, no. Pepper... I think you no. proved you're fit to hang. George, that service was really something. Yeah, it sure was all right. People wearing top hats. The works. <laughs> None of these people even knew the little guy. Charlie George Washington wasn't quite the usual man. A little lonely, sick fellow. Wonder what he thought about. Oh, he was a pretty sharp operator. He made a good deal with the funeral parlor. Had them send out his coffin in advance. He arranged for all this. Yeah. Look what it cost him. His pearls, his earrings. He'd already signed them over to this outfit. If you ask me, he might have cashed him in earlier and enjoyed his life. Yeah, maybe he just wanted to enjoy something else. The bluebird, huh? The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Mm -hmm, that's what I mean. I guess only Charlie had the answer. Yeah. Keep it in the future. The dream. Yes, darling, but you can overdo this future business, you know. Ah, huh? Hey, what is this? <laughs> well, it's just a private little joke, Guthrie. Um, drop you someplace? If your car has an oil filter, don't forget that it's a real money saver for you. But only if it is serviced every six to 8,000 miles. Neglect the oil filter beyond that mileage and it readily becomes a liability by letting dirt, grit, and carbon circulate through precision-fitted engine parts. You can actually see and feel the difference by comparing a new filter element with one that's used up. You'll find the new one weighs less than a pound, and the old, saturated one may easily weigh four or five pounds. A new oil filter element, by the way, is not only the surest way to keep fresh oil clean longer and to protect your motor, it's also the most economical. So if you haven't had that wear-saving filter cartridge replaced in 8,000 miles, why not do it tomorrow? It's another protective car saver service you can get at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy. Alan Reed was heard as Guthrie. Louise Arthur as Lucy. Larry Dobkin as Mac. Bill Boucher as the officer. And Walter Burke as Pepper. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.